talcum powder has been linked to ovarian cancer. Find out more at DrugSafetyNews.com. So, Pap, this week there was a huge award ordered by a state jury in Missouri against Johnson & Johnson for the company's, um, I guess, no knowledge that the talc-based baby powder and shower-to-shower -shower that they were selling for years had the um, had the ability to um, to cause cancer. Yeah, ovarian cancer. Patients. Yeah, you know they said more than that, Sam. Uh, the, the attorney that handled this is a friend, and he's a great lawyer, uh, Jer Jerry Beasley. And the reason we're involved in this case, the reason I'm handling this case also, is because I really want. I want women to understand that, you know, why would you possibly take a risk of using this shower to shower or Johnson's baby powder when there's any risk of ovarian cancer? The studies right now, actually as early as the 1980s, this, the studies started showing there's a connection between the minerals that are found in this powder because it's mined, it's mined from the ground, this talcum is it's mined, mined from the ground but there's minerals that cause inflammation uh, in the organ systems. And anytime you have inflammation, that sometimes leads to scar-based cancers. And what's happening, Sam, is they're finding the minerals that uh, they can trace back to the powder in the tumors that are found in these women. And, and so the question then becomes, uh, you know, you, you had the International Journal of Gynecological Cancer come out just they did a study and they said look the woman a woman who uses this on a regular basis has a 30 to 60 percent increase of ovarian cancer it's not a you know that's not a coincidence Harvard did a study they they said they, they, it was even more compelling they said a woman doesn't even have to use it regularly she puts herself at risk every time she uses it because once that talcum uh, once the minerals from the talcum powder are absorbed into the body uh, they then become they become an they, they create an inflammatory process. The Journal of National Cancer Institute uh, talked about the use of talc in ovarian cancer in 2014. They weren't equivocal about their findings. So the the interesting thing about this case is that this is information that Johnson and Johnson knew is is since the 1980s. The documents in this case are, are abhorrent. I mean, they're they're awful. When you, start, when you start determining what did they know, that's what this jury reacted right. to. You see, this wasn't just, the question, Sam, was not only were they negligent. They obviously were negligent. The question was also, did they show reckless disregard for human life? And the jury came back and said, yeah, they did. And so, um, you know, sometimes, if it's, Sam, if this were a medicine, you know, if this were something that maybe was a life-saving medicine, you had to take it, there'd be some risk-benefit analysis. There is no right. risk-benefit analysis here. There's just right. absolutely no benefit. And, and, and my understanding is uh, that there was a sense within Johnson & Johnson that <clears throat> they, they knew that these sort of uh, the reporting of these links was going to drive down their sales, and so they reoriented who they were going to try and sell this mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is, too, is that they have been basically uh, aware that they were going to have to pay the piper at one point and have been preparing for this litigation in some way for maybe decades. Yeah, they have. Matter of fact, what they did is they went out and hired uh, what what I call biostitutes. Those are, you know, you find them at places like Yale and Princeton, and, you know, there's the, there are these these scientists or these professor types that will say anything for the right amount of money. So what they did is they went out and they phonied up some epidemiology. They, the epidemiology they tried to show, you know, that it's impossible for this to cause ovarian cancer, even though you're finding, you're tracing the minerals right, right. to the ovary. And so the, 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 the problem is when you have a company like this that has that much head start, they get to change the epidemiology because they secretly pay for the epidemiology to make it look like there's no connection. That's what they did here. That's why Jerry did such a wonderful job in this case, actually working his way through that and showing that that's a fraud, that you can go hire a biostitute, which is nothing more than a scientific whore, for uh, the right money. And they're going to say whatever you want them to say. And uh, that's what Johnson & Johnson did here in this case.
Okay, so Pap, just tell us, in a case like this, um, there are um, there are a lot of potential plaintiffs out there. So what happens next? You've had this, um, uh, you have this uh, this um, award. I assume Johnson and Johnson uh, tries to appeal. I mean, what, what, walk us through what okay, happens. Okay, wh- what's going to happen next is this. First of all, you're going to have lawyers that have virtually zero experience thinking I can go handle these cases. Well, they can't. I mean, a guy like, uh, you know, like Beasley, uh, you know, does the same thing we do. We specialize in these cases. This is this is what we do. And so what ends up happening is in, very often you'll have some lawyer go grab a bunch of these cases for people that need to have good representation and they'll end up making bad law in jurisdictions. This is what I, my prediction is on this case. You're going to it's going to be like the uh, you know, it's go, it's going to be like the scene in Jaws where the characters in the little rowboats. You know, I'm going to go catch the big white shark. But what ends up happening is they do so much harm to the to the project itself. And so, what I always try to tell people is know who you're. You know, know who you're hiring on something like this because it can go bad for a lot of women. A lot of women are suffering from ovarian cancer directly related to this talc. And so the question then becomes, you have to, simply because somebody advertises and says, you know, I I handle these cases, you need to find out who they are. Because I I say that not just for, I say that because they they can upset the entire process and a lot of people can be left out in the dark because some lawyer who knew, had no clue on what they were doing, tried to handle this case against Johnson and Johnson and blew it and made bad law that affects women all over the country. So that's the first thing I always talk about. And the second thing is that um, that this case will continue. We're going to continue. You know, there's going to be documents that keep showing up. The documents, the, the documents that Jerry Beasley uh, put in front of the jury are really bad. I mean, they showed really reckless disregard, terrible conduct by Johnson and Johnson. And that's why the jury came back like they did. My prediction is those documents will even get worse as this case goes forward. Wow. Um, uh, really uh, just amazing. And I have to say that, you know, in in the um, uh, the 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 10, I guess now, gosh, uh, 12 years that um, I have known you, I have uh, I and I hear these stories uh, from you that you uh, deal with on a day to day basis. Uh, when you find these documents in these corporations, and I am, I, I still have the ability to be amazed at the callousness and the, the just the, the sheer sense uh, that these uh, folks, because they're making a dollar, owe nothing to the general public or their customers. It is, it is shocking to me, uh, Pap. It's always a pleasure uh, to talk to you. Thank well, you. Thank so much. you, Sam.